look so good. The whole derelict process started last year. You probably remember the demo that we done at Gamescom. You saw a staff area in a kind of a derelict state. Um, we also then took that information or that, that, that kind of data, should we say, and, and started to kind of prototype using the same geometry on planet. So the, the R&D process was kind of done mid last year. It's kind of exponentially grown from there. So initially, the sort of task that was given to us was to create these derelict sites and at the beginning it was sort of more of a technical challenge where we were just trying to break the ship apart but then I think gradually over time the more we started to delve into it the more the possibilities of what could be done with it was just sort of growing and growing in scope so by the end of it we were thinking things like inhabited like space sites sites that have been taken over by bandits you could be set up as decoys for both potential enemies that could be kind of waiting there for for play to then sort of jump into and then surprise them and the more we thought about it the more it sort of grew and the more ideas that sort of came about from it so it started off as more of a technical sort of challenge and just trying to get something in there and it sort of grew grew and grew in scope as we went along which was for us like a, a really exciting thing. Um, we obviously we have to populate the planets with with a, a certain amount of you know stuff like you know outposts which you've already seen and the derelicts which you, you see in today and it's kind of a really kind of good opportunity to to just sort of get really creative with with the assets that we've we've already made there's no real kind of breakdown of the ship that exists because we already have to kind of break the head off and break the body into parts for the whole damage system to work in in the engine so it's about taking that geometry with its interiors obviously uh, and getting really creative with it um, and and kind of you know scattering these things on planets so you you you'll come across several different scenarios of, of of derelicts so we wanted to kind of get get down to a, a key of like how how long something has been on, on, on a planet and that obviously dictates how it's aged uh, over time um, and potentially you know how it's aged so if you come across something in a desert it's generally quite a very kind of um, dry erosion kind of type that you see on, on, on metal. If you come across something in the snow, it's completely different. If you come across something in a swamp, it's completely different again. So we have all this information that we need to kind of make work uh, on, on these assets with as little human input as possible, should we say. So we had to be very kind of clever with the shader setup to work in different biomes efficiently. It all really comes down to how big the ship is and how the interior was um, laid out. Uh, for example, the ship I was working on, uh, the Caterpillar, is a very, very modular ship by the design uh, and how it was built in universe. So I was allowed to go actually quite big with how many modules I could use for it. Uh, and that allowed me to create as many um, uh, different scenarios and sets from just two small pieces to the almost full uh, complete ship. Uh, uh, laid on the ground. But if it comes down to smaller ships like Freelancer, uh, we pretty much resolved, um, resolved it by just using the existing damage and just spicing it up a little bit. Because obviously, uh, when you don't have explosions, when you don't have uh, all the uh, fire, uh, fireworks, and it's just on the planet, and you can go there and study and kind of come up, uh, come up close to it. You kind of need to put a little bit more detail, detail into it. With these derelict sites, we kind of wanted to give the player a point on a planet or somewhere in the universe, which gave them a destination. And we didn't want the destination to be simply just some pieces on the floor. So for us, we wanted to explore the, the idea of these derelict sites being a character within, within themselves. So when you approach a derelict site, you could then, just by looking at it, seeing what it offered, whether it's hostile, whether it's something that was a severe crash, whether it's a place that's been taken over by bandits. And so with that, we wanted to create these, these, these little pockets in space where players could go and feel like they were part of like history and there was a bit of story behind them and a bit of growth behind them. And for, for, for us, it was, it was a great opportunity. For sure, if a ship has kind of been laid to rest, should we say, in a desert, then it, then it does kind of almost kind of mold in with the sand uh, in a certain direction. So you can get very kind of creative with how that kind of merges in with different terrain types for sure. Um, but also you can go complete other spectrum, like what are you going to do if you, you find something in a lake? 
what are you going to do if you find something hanging off the edge of a waterfall? You know, there's there's so many kind of creative opportunities to create these to create these moments that a player vividly remembers, like the first time they come across that site. It's our job to, to for them to just, you know switch the game off and go, guys, you, if you've seen this crash site here, it's like it's totally awesome. Um, so we, we want to create opportunities like that for the player to see. We then need to kind of go hunting across planets to find sites. So if you, if you worked in film, um, you'll generally have like a, a location scout at pre-production who will kind of go through the script and they'll be appointed to go out around the world and find these, these key locations that would suit the script. So uh, it could be anywhere in the world. So it's very much, we have to do like a mini version of that in the editor. So we have to go out and find these locations that kind of complement the sites that we're trying to make. Uh, it's not as simple as place, site here, done and walk away. If you were to fly around a planet on a ship, it would take you an extremely long time, right? So you'd have staff sat there all day flying their ships, just going, oh, I think down there look nice and great. I'm sure they'd love it. But the fact remains we can't do that. So in the editor, we can just kind of essentially walk speed around these planets, locate sites, locate valleys, you know, and you just, it's really interesting that a certain site may look a certain way at a certain time of day, but when that planet rotates and the sunset kicks in, it's a completely different animal. Um, so we have to kind of, you know, you think about that as well. And the habitation side of things, like we, we, we want to get into sun goes down, lights go on. You know, there's all these kind of cycles that we need to think about. Maybe a campfire lights up. There's all these kind of things that add so much more than just a, a derelict lump of metal in, in, in the middle of nowhere. You, you want to also have enough room so you can place your derelict in such a way that the light just goes exactly where you want it. So it's like a nice glancing or nice kind of uh, complementing light on the derelict itself, which further kind of intensifies the effect. It's interesting because, the, you know, it's, it's almost you're doing exactly what they're doing in real life um, to, and, and kind of you're setting this scene up to be hopefully beautiful when the play, player comes across it. When players are sort of navigating around, they might just see a sneak peek of a little bit of a starfare or a little bit of, of a, a gladius or whichever ship that may, that may be, and suddenly it's, it's, it becomes an intriguing point and then suddenly you're lured into this location that you never imagined. And I think it's moments like that which just adds to the whole universe where you never expect to come across something and suddenly you find something which just tells a tale in the story. When we come to work on a direct site and how we approach it, we sort of have to use our own imagination and kind of come up with our own scenarios of what could have possibly happened in this crash site, what could potentially have developed over time with, with a crash site, because it might just be an initial crash, but then over time, different factions might have taken it over. So they might have all left a little trace of history. And for us, there's no, there's no written law in any of this. It's kind of up to us to just go a bit sort of wild with our imagination, sort of really, really push it. And it's, it's great for us as an artist because it's a bit different from just a sterile ship. We saw with these derelict ships, it was a way to take the existing assets and do so much more with them. The first part of the process, obviously, we kind of built, we built off the stuff that we'd done last year. Um, the shader setup that we'd done just kind of wouldn't work anymore um, for the way the planets work. So the second layer on a ship's shader needs to inherit what the biome is, right? So there's always going to be metal, but then that second layer could be snow, it could be sand, so it, it harmoniously blends with the terrain, right? It doesn't look like it's just been stuck on. And it's a case of really kind of understanding what you're trying to do with the site. So as we've worked and the guys have kind of worked on this stuff, we've been going, oh, you know what would be really cool? Like, you know, could we, could we set up a little base here where someone's kind of taken the husk of, or, you know, the hull of a, a cutlass, and they've created a little hacking pod out of it. That instantly transforms that ship into being something completely different, and it's it's a makeshift home for someone. Um, and and then, yeah, kind of like if you if you were to find a site potentially up high in a high altitude, for sure, like where you're going to get power from. Obviously, you've got solar panels which you can use, but we're also trying to get movement into the scenes as well. Um, so rather than these kind of static sites just putting some windmill fans, generating a bit of power, you know, a few aerials wisping in the wind. Cloth obviously speaks thousands of words when it's moving. Um, there's all these kind of little things that we're trying to do to, to kind of, you know, it's like that kind of subconscious meaning to everything um, that we're trying to execute at the same time, which is cool.
I think it's really cool. And the guys, the guys have done really well at kind of creating this kit that complements the sites as they are. So, as I said, we started off with the base hull, and you're still going to get these sites. You know, 80% of them is you're just going to find the ship, and there's going to be nothing in there. The other 20% will be someone's come across it and they've decided to make it their home, their outpost. Maybe it's a smuggler's den. There's all these kind of archetypes that you can kind of tap into to get really creative. Quite a big technical limitation that we had to always keep in mind was that the derelicts, we're not going on the planet and we're not going there and just created piece by piece like we would uh, a bespoke, sit bespoke city or um, a, a bespoke location. They have to kind of work wherever future artists or a future designer would want to place them. So we, we had to always keep in mind that the ground it's going to be placed on, it can be flat or it can be fairly, um, fairly distorted, uh, which was a big challenge in of itself to find out that balance between how granular it has to be so it can conform to the more kind of difficult terrain and how detailed we can make it while keeping those limitations in mind. Our technical uh, artist uh, made a special tech, a piece of tech for us uh, that basically is able to track an area that we selected for all the deformities and all the, uh, how the ground is actually, how it looks. And it can sample all the areas where we want different pieces uh, to be at and it will place it exactly so it's bedded exactly how it should be. And we don't have to do anything. We actually build our derelicts on a flat surface. Everything else is done by, by an amazing tech done by our um, uh, technical artists. Once we got all our pieces together, um, we started having a bit of fun with um, putting these rec sites together. Uh, we looked a lot at reference once again just to um, see what happened when, say for example, when an airliner has a crash, uh, how it burns, how the different components uh, break and uh, lay on the ground. So uh, yeah, we looked at the reference, we assembled our um, pieces in a separate level. Uh, that way we had a bit more control over where everything went and we could figure out exactly where things were going to go. And then it was just a case of packaging that together, um, exporting it onto the planet and then essentially figuring out how it aligned with the planet. Yeah, just going from there really, just a lot of iteration and a, a lot of back and forth, but um, it, it was necessary to get the result we wanted. There's the whole kind of design side of things, so these, these they're not just there for show. Design obviously have an input in, in what goes in them, you know, are they mission, are they a mission waypoint? Um, and, then, and then, you know, once, once other systems start coming online, of course, like, you may come across a site and it may be massively hostile. You know, and what intrigues me, and I kind of think I touched on it last year in, in an interview I done with Jared. Um, he was talking to me about like, you know, what were you thinking? And I'm just like, well, I think in multiplayer map mode. So I'm just like, okay, there's a staff area here. There's kind of a map in itself, but now I've got the luxury of kind of spreading that map around a kilometer square if I need to. But then you create these things of high risk and high reward. Um, so there may be kind of like one turret that's working, right? Um, you, you capture that turret, you, you, you all of a sudden become like a game objective in yourself. So it's just, it's just like I say, you just look for opportunities with this. We, we're creating the ultimate sandbox, basically. So you, you look for opportunities to, to make the most of that. I was responsible uh, for uh, breaking apart the Caterpillar, which is that big transport ship that can have um, a custom length, uh, which was quite a difficult um, challenge uh, on its own because if you look at the Starfarer, for example, every Starfarer looks exactly the same. Caterpillar can have two cargo modules or can have 15 of them, the, uh, the, way, it was, the way it was built. So I had to kind of, either I or any artist in the future that will be working on this ship and creating new scenarios can build pretty much whatever he wants and, however, uh, and it's not restricted by uh, just doing like a five module one. So myself, I was in, put in charge of the Starfarer, which was probably one of the more easier one of the ships, purely with the fact that it was kind of confined to just a few elements in terms of the ship overall, where some ships, there were many parts and many different combinations, such as, such as the uh, Caterpillar. The, the, the Starfarer itself was just essentially five pieces, which I sort of had to work on and work on the material so that they blended with the, the correct planet. But for me, it was it was quite fun to do because of the scale of it. 
as soon as you place it on a planet, it just adds so much scope to walk to wherever you are. And, it, and, and with the interior, you've got a vast sort of structure which makes sense as a ship, but then as soon as you make it a derelict site, you've got a lot of opportunities to sort of take that interior and do, do like a, a, a quite a vast range of, of things with it in terms of making it like either housing or, or or like some sort of security den where there's some hidden hidden like scavenger or, or like loot within. I think what's really interesting is when you have these wreck sites on the ground, they're transformed in terms of their character. I think it's it's getting quite eerie actually. Uh, looking at something, say for example the constellation, you know, it's quite a sleek, modern, you know, advanced piece of technology, it's flying around, it's great. And then it's growing, you know, crashes on the ground and it's nothing. <laughs> you know, it's just a shell, it's a husk. Um, but what we really what we really try to get into the um, uh, the character of the the wreck sites is just how varied they are, you know, they could be, for example, have people lived in them, have creatures lived in them? Uh, how exactly did it crash? What caused it to happen? There are little things we can add to these crash sites would give them a lot of character and a lot of depth and I think um, that's what's been really fun for me um, just seeing if the players can figure out exactly you know what happened even if it may not necessarily be a mission objective it you know having that interest I think certainly helps build the universe Yeah, I guess you could say ships have always held kind of a power over me. I mean, growing up, I couldn't get enough of them. I'd hang out by the pads any chance I got and listen to the pilots swap stories. My dad used to tell me, you weren't born, you landed. <laughs> but yeah, there was always something about them. These aren't graveyards to me, no, no, they, they, they're a testament of life. Think about all the lives that touched this one ship before it got to this place. It's crazy, right? And there are a few things in this universe that have that kind of power. To me, it always comes down to the people who flew it the modifications that they made to make it theirs. I mean, we could find 10 Connie wrecks, and even though the layout's gonna be the same, every single one of them is going to be different. There'll be some kind of lingering presence to connect you to the people who lived on it. When I look at a ship, I see a person. Now, I know when, when people find these wrecks, all they see are mounds of scrap, or a payday, or whatever, but to me. Maybe it was just growing up on a dusty rock, but a ship was freedom. There was limitless possibility.